So you decided to try mining in the universe of Star Citizen. Well, you've come to the right place. Mining is a fantastic choice to get an opportunity to sit back, relax, and potentially earn large amounts of AUEC. In Star Citizen, there are three ways of mining. You can mine small crystallized gems on foot with a multi-tool. Also, you can mine medium-sized crystallized gems with a small vehicle like the Great Cat ROC. Lastly, you can mine large rocks with ships like the Miss Prospector or the Argo Mo. In this tutorial, we'll be going through the A to Z of ship mining. We'll be using the Miss Prospector. I'll take you through the understanding of mining heads and consumables. After that, we'll cover where to mine. You can expect to learn how to scan for mineable rocks and a detailed explanation of the mining user interface. Then we'll go over the best ores to look for. Following that, we'll cover how to fracture and extract the mining material. I'll teach you how to handle quantanium. Then to close out, I'll take you through where to sell and how to sell your mining ore. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button for more Star Citizen content such as this. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, it's phase one. Before we get started, I'd like to advise that any keybinds mentioned in this tutorial is subject to change as Star Citizen is still under development. Should you notice that any keybind in this video does not work, hit escape, go to options and find the keybind. I've also gone ahead and left all the segments of this tutorial in the description below for future reference. To get started, let's head out to your local mining equipment dealer to pick up some useful mining equipment such as a new mining head and some mining consumables to assist us on our journey. You can find mining equipment at the Shuben Interstellar in New Babbage at Microtech or the Dumpers Depot in Arcwork. And if you're in Crusader space, you can pick some up at the Dumpers Depot in Port Alisar. In this tutorial, we're located in Lorville, so we'll head over to Tammany and Sons. Please make note that if you're renting your mining vehicle, that you can only use the stock equipment. Those that own one, I highly recommend picking up a size 1 helix mining head if you have a prospector or a size 2 helix mining head or the Argo Mo if you can afford it. For the size 1, it costs a whopping 108k AUEC at the moment, but it's definitely worth it. If you can't afford one right now, don't worry, you'll make enough money to pick one up soon. If you choose, you can pick up another affordable mining head now to use temporarily. But your ultimate goal as a miner is to upgrade your mining head to the Helix mining head. So now I mentioned consumables earlier, and for those that are new, you're probably wondering what mining consumables are. These are used to impose a certain influence on the mining process for a short period of time. Some consumables can influence instability, energy level or even expand the fracture window and etc. Don't worry, we'll cover what those things are a little bit later. These consumables are attachable to mining heads. Some mining heads have no available slots while others have up to three. The Helix mining head I recommended previously has three slots. In addition, make note that some of these mining consumables have multiple charges, which means you can use them multiple times. Let's quickly go over the available types of mining consumables. The branch reduces the rock's instability by half, with the cost of a 50% reduction to the charge window rate. We'll cover what that means a little later. The furrow reduces the resistance of a rock, but at the expense of 20% increase in instability. Lifeline reduces the damage from an exploding rock. The optimum reduces the green zone. This is good for rocks that have very small green zones. I'll cover what that means a little later. Rhyme reduces the rock's energy level immediately. The stampede doubles the speed at which the rock's energy level increases. Surge increases the rock's energy level by 30% while the torpid reduces the rock's resistance but at the cost of reduction of the charge rate of the rock's energy level by half. Just keep in mind that these stats and attributes can change as CIG continues to develop the game. You can find more details like this from Danberg's Ultimate Mining Guide. You can find the link in the description below. For now, I recommend picking up the brand consumable. 
Also, don't forget to bring some extra food and water. So now that you purchase your new mining head and consumables, hit F1 to open your Mobi Glass. Under your vehicle management app, find and select your mining vehicle. Here you can attach your new mining head and then attach your mining consumables. Head to the ASOP terminal and call your ship and get yourself situated. So now that you're in your ship, you're probably wondering where to mine. Well, there are two general areas where you can mine. First are asteroid belts and second are planets and moon surfaces. I highly recommend mining on the surfaces of planets or moons due to the fact that asteroid mining is inefficient at the moment as mineable rock fragments float away after fracturing or even sometimes disappear altogether. It's possible that this may be fixed now. If you prefer to mine asteroids, then you can find some in the rings of Yila or the asteroid clusters of the rest and rearm stations across the star system. But in this tutorial, we'll head over to the surface of Magda, a moon of Hurston. To do this, open your Mobi Glass and in your star map, find and select the moon and jump over. Now that we're planet side, before we begin prospecting and mining, let's first get an understanding of the capabilities of the ship. The prospector or any mining ship in general are sluggish when it comes to atmospheric flight. Take a few moments to assess how quickly it takes your ship to come to a complete halt after acceleration. This will give you an understanding on how to better manage your braking when approaching mineable rocks, so that you don't crash into them of course. Be aware that when braking, your maneuvering thrusters can quickly become overheated. Once overheated, they will shut down momentarily. If you find that you're often experiencing overheating issues, you should consider upgrading your coolers. By using the K key, you can activate your veto thrusters which will assist with your ship with vertical movement to keep the ship up. To start mining, we'll first need to find mineable rocks. Find a moon or a planet or even the sun to use as a reference point so that you don't find yourself going in circles. Use the tab key to activate your ship's scanner. Before we begin scanning, let's get a better understanding on how to approach finding rocks. Your primary scanner is your own eyes. Why I'm saying this is in most scenarios, you can pinpoint mineable rocks off in a distance before your scanners even pick it up. Whilst flying around, hold and release the left mouse button and send out a pulse. Holding this all the way will send the pulse out in the maximum distance. You can adjust your scanning radius with your mouse wheel. Rolling up will adjust the scanning radius from a spheric bubble to a forward direction. This increases the scanning distance in that direction. Once a rock has been detected, you'll find it in your visor. In your vicinity, your scanner will pick up mineable rocks, which are represented by these circular rocks in the UI. Point your cursor at the rock and hold left click to scan the rock and reveal information about the rock. In the top corner, you'll find that the rock's composition details. As you can see, the rock contains diamonds and quartz. You can see that at least 14% of this rock's composition is diamonds. Before moving forward, let's quickly go over the kinds of ores you should be looking for to maximize profit. Ultimately, your goal is to find Quantanium. At the moment, Quantanium sells for 88.098 UEC per unit, but Quantanium is relatively rare. Please do keep in mind that these numbers may change as CIG continues to develop the game. The remaining Baxalite, Terranite, Boraz, Laranite, Agrisium are good choices as well. But when found, make sure that the desired ore takes up at least 2.5% of the total mass of the rock. This will ensure you're getting a decent amount to earn significant amounts of money when selling. Following that, you can pick up Hephaestonite or Titanium. If you find Hephaestonite, make sure 
it totals at least 10% of the total mass of the rock. And for titanium, make sure it's at least 20%. There are other ores, but at the moment, they're not worth your time. Hit the M key to bring up the mining UI. So now let's quickly go over the user interface. By default, your mining head will be set to the fracture mode. The fracture mode is used to break up the rock into smaller fragments before you can actually extract the desired ore. As you can see, after your scanner has completely scanned the rock, you'll notice the energy transfer graph. This graph will give you a bird's eye view of the amount of energy you're transferring into the rock. Below that will be the instability threshold. Under that is the amount of resistance the rock has. Further down is the laser throttle. Under that, you'll find the rock's energy level. Now this graph is very critical to keep an eye on. I'll expand on this shortly. To the right, you'll find the cargo capacity of your mining vehicle. Under that is a fracture sensor and below that is the overcharge sensor. As we begin to mine, I'll explain the dynamics of all this data to help you mine efficiently and safe. Left click to activate your laser and throttle up your mouse wheel. As you can see, the laser throttle percentage will begin to increase. This is your gauge on the amount of power or energy you're transferring to the rock. As your throttle goes up, you'll notice that the rock's energy level will begin to rise as well as the energy transfer graph will begin to populate. Your goal is to get the rock's energy level in the green zone found here. Once in the green zone on your right, you'll notice that the fracturing sensor percentage will begin to increase. Your goal is to get the fracturing sensor percentage to 100% while maintaining the rock's energy level within the green zone. Adjust your throttle once in the green zone to avoid overcharging the rock. If you transfer too much energy, the rock's energy level will reach the red zone and the overcharge sensor will go up. You do not want this as if you overcharge the rock too much, it may explode and destroy your ship and you within it. If you do hit the red, you can either decrease your laser throttle or move the laser away from the rock for a few moments. If you notice that you're not able to transfer enough energy into the rock, even though your throttle is at 100%, then move your ship closer to the rock. If you still need more power, then go into your systems and overclock your laser. In the scenario where, for example, the rock's instability is too high, you can now use the brand's consumable I mentioned earlier. You can find the button here, and once activated, you'll notice that the rock has become more stabilized. As I mentioned before, different consumables are used for different things, so when you get a chance, look into them. So now that the rock has fractured, you'll notice that some, if not all, are highlighted in purple. If you find that none of the rocks are purple, then you just need to further break them down. When breaking down rock fragments, make sure to tone down on the laser throttle as the rock is smaller and requires less energy to crack. The rocks highlighted in purple can now be extracted. Right click to go into extraction mode and left click to extract the rock. As you extract, you'll notice that your cargo capacity will begin to fill up. If the rock you're extracting isn't 100% of the ore you're looking for, then the remaining percentage is either inert material or a combination of other ores and inert material. You want to limit the amount of inert material you extract as they take up space in your cargo hold. The value of inert materials are extremely low and will stunt your potential profits. Once you finish extracting your desired ore, then move on and find another one. So what if you find quantanium? Quantanium is a volatile ore, so once extracted, you're on a timer. Once extracted, quantanium ore will begin to become more and more volatile until either you sell it or it will explode in your ship. But the good news is, is that your ship will indicate how much time you have left with this light here. After extraction, when it becomes approximately 8 minutes before explosion, the light will be yellow. When it's flashing faster in orange, you have about 6 minutes left. When it's fast in red, you have about 2 minutes. And if it reaches the fourth stage, which is the fastest in red, 
just know that you have about 25 seconds left. The good thing is you have the option to jettison your saddlebag before explosion, just in case you're unable to reach the station in time to sell. Make note that when you jettison, the ship will jettison all the ore in the saddlebags. Just a quick tip, when you find quantanium, make sure to fracture all the fragments that have quantanium before you begin extraction. This way you have more time to work with. So now that your cargo capacity is full, where to next? To sell it, you'll need to head to your local station that has a refinery terminal. You can find one at Port Olisar, Area 18 in Babbage, and Lorville. In our case, we're in Lorville, so we'll head over there. Once there, we'll request for a landing pad, land, and head over to the refinery terminal at the local admin office. Here, you can now find your ship and select the option to sell the material on your ship. Pay attention to the percentage of material you mined. Even though the Terranite takes up 20% of the saddlebag, it sums up about 60% of the profits. Pay attention to the amount of inert material I mined. This will give you a better understanding on how to improve your next run. Some miners are bringing in hundreds of thousands of AUEC just mining the right material and being picky, so your potential is limitless. To sell, click sell to refinery. Congratulations, you now have all that you need to mine efficiently to make a consistent income as a miner in the universe of Star Citizen. If you liked anything in this video, make sure to leave a like and if you haven't already, subscribe for more Star Citizen content. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I will see you on the next one.